Shout glory. You shall be the next to testify in the name of Jesus Christ. In this business and career breakthrough service, I see you break forth in the name of Jesus Christ. It is time, it is my privilege, granted by God's servant to take us in this part of the service. It is testimony time. Somebody put your hands together for Jesus. Let the following come forward to share their testimonies. As Milka Kitemange, Sister Milka Kitemange, please be coming first. Sister Esther Wamaida, Sister Sarah Mumbi, Brother James Kuria, Brother Elkana Eric, and Sister Feva Omanyo. Sister Feva Omanyo, Brother Elkana Eric, James Kuria, Sarah Mumbi. Please put your hands up more so that they can be marching first. Sister Esther Wamaida and Milka Kitamange. As they are coming, there are two testimonies to be read. The first testimony is from Sister Grace M. Divine healing and breakthrough. During one night with the king, I attended the service with a lot of headache, which has been disturbing me since October 2015. That is for three months. A kid into the 21 days of prayer and fasting for kingdom advancement. One, the headache is now gone completely. Two, my title deed that has been with health for eight years was released last week on Thursday. And I am giving God all the glory. The second testimony to be read is from uh, Brother Nicholas Juguna, testifying of divine healing. He says, I have had a toothache for four weeks. I keyed into the mystery of blood of sprinkling at Kesha. After leaving the Kesha, I slept like a baby. No more aching since then. And I return all the glory to God. Your hands are more for Jesus. Lord. Praise the Lord Church. From glory to glory. My name is Esther Wamaida Njero. I'm favor also. And God has remembered me. I cleared Kenyatta University 13 years ago and I could not find a job. But finally, when we started the 21 days of praying fasting, I did not pray for my needs. I did not pray for my family. Neither did I pray for my siblings. I engaged in praying for the kingdom and I, I I prayed according to the guidelines. And finally, the Lord has turned away my captivity. As Psalms 126 said, and I got my miracle job. I was told to report the following day, and I've already reported. I started working on Wednesday. I give all the glory and honor to Jesus. Somebody shout glory! Praise the Lord, church. My name is Brother James Kuria. I'm here with a catalog of testimonies to return all the glory to God. Yes, sometimes last year I came and prayed with our regional overseer, Pastor Casey. And uh, before then, there was some funny, funny rats that was in my house that would not let go. I came with that rat from uh, Mombasa, and uh, it was amazing. It only appeared when, during the night when I woke up to pray. But after I came, the regional overseer prayed with me, and I went and anointed my home. And that rat, it used to disappear every time I want to kill it. But this time I said, I'm going to kill you myself. You're not going to transform yourself to any other thing. And to the glory of God, after the anointing, I killed it myself. Uh, from there, <laughs> things started to happen. We had believed God for our second child, and I was believing God for our man child. And after that rat was dead, immediately my wife was confirmed pregnant. And... Uh, to the glory of God, I, I told her to take 20,000 shillings and go and purchase man's clothes. We are not going to confirm anything. And to the glory of God, we were blessed with a bouncing baby boy. And I, <laughs> as if that was not enough, I, my wife holds a degree and she had looked for a job and was not getting one. I told for so many years, since 20, 2011, she's been looking for a job. And I told my wife, it is not a must to be employed. God can give you a divine idea to start your own business. And to the glory of God, God gave her a, a divine uh, a business idea. And to date, she does not need to look for any job. And she's contented with what she is doing. And I told God, the salary that she was to get, because I believe she, she, she qualifies for a six-figure salary. I told God, 
plus my six figure salary god added that six figure salary to my own and to the glory of god it was given to me her six figure salary added to mine and god blessed us with a powerful good job as if that was not enough we believed god for our own house i told god i wanted my own home and i said before 2015 is over things must change and we must move to our own home and to the glory of God, 31st on the door last year, we moved to our own mansion. To the glory of God. And I'm returning here to give all the glory to God. Somebody shout glory. Every evil rat shall be dead in the name of Jesus Christ. kitemange. Mimi natoka Kangundo kila Sante na kuja kutoka Kangundo Tangu niingie Winners niliingia 2015 na mimi nimebarikiwa nimeona Mungu akiwa mwaminifu wakati nilikuwa ni, nikiwabudu upande wa Tala nilipewa ministry ya uimbaji nikaanza na volume 1 kupitia mchango sikuwa na vaiva ya Mungu nikatoa volume 2 kupitia tena loan ikawa kama tu inasimama na wakati niliingia winners Mungu akafungua njia nilikuwa nikija naweka CD zangu chini naomba Mungu anipatie kibali katika uimbaji ndio nika release volume 2 nikiwa eh, volume 3 nikiwa winners namwambia nawaambia nimeona Mungu amenipatia kibali amenipatia kazi ya kusupply mboga na amekuwa mwaminifu kwangu Tangu nige winners njia zangu zimefunguka mtoto wangu ameenda inji za ngamba amekuwa mwaminifu kwangu na sivyo simrudie bwana Somebody shout glory Sister Milka testifies of a divine breakthrough says she joined winners in 2015 her records have not been selling and that has been for 5 years and she's been struggling to produce another album she believed God for her breakthrough. She has been placing the albums on the floor in the church every day she comes. She comes from uh, Kangundo. She is giving God all the glory. The albums are now selling. She has produced a third album. And she has returned this morning to give God all the glory. Amen. From glory to glory, I'm Sarah Mombi serving from security. <clears throat> I joined this commission on 2010 when I found Mambi Vikiwebuye in Pika when I was tattered and battered. That, at that moment, I was just walking looking for help from anywhere. But the moment I entered the NSS of offices, I found Mambi Vikiwebuye and she gave a uh, shoulder to lean on. By that time, she, she, the devil was not happy. I, she wrote uh, my, her number in a, in a paper, but she omitted one number. So I just tried, uh, I went on trying to trace her until I found her again, and she connected me back to Winners Chapel. The moment I joined, this, I joined this commission, my son as well was still battered and tattered. His social life and uh, his education was not doing well at all at all. But as, at this moment, as I speak, my son is in form four and he's doing well, including his social, social life. I thank God for that. When I, when I came to Winners, oh, some, things, some, some other things also followed. My, our father's land went, the teacher is in Okarawa and some prods. So I started praying and one day I went to Pastor Gishina's office and we prayed that it gave me anointing oil. And I, on, it was on a Friday, I went and anointed our, uh, our ground where we live. And uh, that from that moment, on a Monday, the land, all property that were, were taken away, they started coming back to my dad. So, and she, my dad recovered them. Autom he automatically recovered them. As we are speaking now, there are some projects that were stagnant for, that, for more than that five years. As we speak right now, they are all done. I glorify God for his great doings. My name is Elena Nerek, Ashering Department. Sister Favor Omanyo, if you're there, please come to the altar to share your testimony. I stand here to return glory to God. Five years ago, 
I promise God that every money he gives me, I'll be giving him between 25 and 30%, and I've faithfully done so. Last year, the second week of March, Pastor Victor stood here, and he said, somebody will dedicate two cars and a house. And I went home and told my wife, that's my testimony. But she asked me, where is the money? I said, but I've been giving to God's account. So I believe God to give me. 10th June, I dedicated the first car. 13th June, I dedicated a brand new house, no loan, no expenditure from my own. That July, I dedicated the second car. The RO spoke here in the month of May. He said, somebody is going to receive a transaction by M-Pesa. We went home and I got a call. And the transaction was at such a level, it couldn't go through M-Pesa. So I was told the school fees for my children have been paid through last year to this year. In October, we had a challenge. In September, we had a challenge with one of my vehicles, and we could not get the parts on planet Earth. And finally, I went to the RO, and I explained my challenge. And he said, God, let the part be found. Two days later, we got a call from Germany. The part had been found, and in five days, the car was back on the road. Then, 18th of November, Pastor Eno Kadeboy came into the country. I gave that car for service. Then two weeks later, the vehicle just closed on the highway. And I came back to the RO and the RP, and I said, I have a challenge. And they made their prayers. And the faithful God who walked before me, when I sent that car to DTW, they said the bill would be 1.4 million. But I said, Lord, I'm not paying any bill. And God is faithful. The first week of January, I was called, come and pick your car. The bill was 10% of what it had been quoted to be. Shiloh 2015. I emptied my bank account and brought my last amount to this house. And I believed God. By the time we closed December, I had handled an amount of money that I've never handled in one month in my lifetime. I give glory to God. Somebody shout glory. From glory to glory. My name is Sister Feva Omano. I'm here to thank God for his faithfulness. Uh, the week before Shiloh, we were at Adam's and the servant of God was, was preaching and he said at the prayer moment that tell God what you want to do and he will do it. That thing that you want tomorrow when you wake up, let it be there. And I knelt down and I told God, God, you have to show up for me in my workplace. Now, uh, previously I used to work in a big real estate company in this country and uh, I was doing well financially. My results, there was no hassle. But that job stopped me even from coming to church because I will go as, as three months. Sometimes I will be here in church and I will be called to go to work. So one day I woke up and said, which kind of job is this that won't let me serve God? So I went to work. I asked God, what should I do? And God said I should choose between him and the job. So I resigned from the job. I came here, told Pastor Victor, uh, Daddy, I, I stopped working. And he asked me why. I explained to him. So he said, if it's from God, then God shall, shall give you another job. So I started coming here for, for, for covenant hour, for, for morning hour prayers. And as I came, Pastor Victor prayed for me and I went and got the job. But something happens. Uh, that job, when, when I got it, I was given just the normal, normal, normal sales uh, executive job. But my salary was way beyond even my marketing manager's salary. So now the forces are at the, are the office, because of that, I think they knew they started fighting me because they could not understand why I, I'm a very junior officer and my salary is bigger than, than all of them. But I said, God, you have not brought me here for shame. So I, I, I stayed at the job because after every three months, you're supposed to submit your report. And I stayed there for three months. And normally, I'm, I'm someone who delivers beyond my targets. But something was, was wrong because this time I wasn't delivering within my targets. And they had laid a trap for me. They said, this time, when you are submitting the report, she must go home. And they would speak in the corridors, but I said, God, you did not bring me here for shame. So when the servant of God said that, I said, God, my targets, if there is one thing that I need you to do for me, I have to meet my targets. I'm not here to shame you. But the next day, I went to work in the morning, and a phone call rang. Then I received, it was a very senior person in the government, actually a CS, and he called me, said, I've been referred to you by someone. So I went to his office, as he had asked me. Then he told me, I'm looking for property. 
I said which kind of property. If you can get me a property of what this and this amount, I'll, I'll appreciate. Then I said when? He said right now. And in the real estate market, it can even take you one month before you close a deal. That day I went with that CS, I showed him two properties, and he chose a property which was even of a higher amount than what he wanted, and then paid. Within one day, I had hit my targets to February, targets for five months. I'm here to return all the glory to God. This can only be the doing of God. Somebody lift up your voice as you appreciate him. Father, we say thank you. You are the doer of the testimonies that have been shared this morning. Receive all the praise and all the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ. Put your hands together for Jesus. You know me before. I'm not the one that you used to know. Jesus Christ is the one I adore. He will be the blessing me to show. Never, never mind what I'm going through. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. I'm destined for greatness, created for success. Can't you see that it's showing me? I say I'm born to win. I'm born to reign in life. Born to reign in life. I'm God in a reward. No, 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 no.
something in life. I'm no ordinary person. I'm destined for greatness. If that is you, you are going to prophesy that into your life once again. Come on, choir, prophetically, born to win, born to reign in life. I am no ordinary person. I'm destined for greatness. Come on, choir. Born to win, Come on. born to reign in life, born to reign in life. I'm no ordinary person. I'm destined for greatness. Born to win. morning let's worship the king lift up your twins and let's magnify him he's worthy of all our praise our rainy king is worthy of all our praise magnify his name this morning glorify his name lord jesus we thank you lord jesus we glorify your name thank you and thank you and thank you and thank you to you be all the glory amen Jesus mighty name we are praying can you see all those people sharing testimony rainy this morning God will give you a testimony that is bigger than their own in the name of Jesus the man on the camera look at me message is focus so let them see the focus message is focus and if you, are, if you are not able to do it, let another person help you. God bless you. Now, he, now, she was praying for the kingdom of God. And was not praying for herself. And God eat her with a miracle job after 13 years. Was busy. Praying for the kingdom of God. I see somebody learning a lesson from that. Amen. If you are the one, shout a louder amen. amen. And did you hear the testimony of that brother with catalog of list of testimony after the demonic rat died? Came to God's servant, the region of Vasia, and suddenly he said, This rat, I will kill you by myself. Confronted the rat. The way I confronted the cat, the demonic cat when we were in Bamako, Mali. That wanted to make the word of God look wrong. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 14. He said, not one among you, covenant people, is expected to be barren. Not even among your cattle. And so my wife started raising this end that the covenant speaks not only on us but on our livestock and so this livestock end produced about nine eggs then the demonic cat came first time to eat it and broke everything second time two days to hatching it they were all broken i said no this is a battle and there's a prophetic parable here so i waited in the night for that evil animal and i opened the door on the head of the animal and i said every animate and inanimate object they have ears they can hear and i said to the cat we are in for war if you are the one eating this thing and from that day it was settled now there is nothing listen there, there is nothing in the cat there is nothing in the end it is not the end that makes for fruitfulness but god was painting a picture and now the next batch of the eggs Arch successfully the following month after I now learned the prayer to pray Lord you are not the one holding my miracle children you have blessed us with miracle children I can't be asking you every devil eating up our productivity and fruitfulness I curse you so I could pray well then the following month 13th of March 2006 2007 my wife was confirmed pregnant now that rat died after the prophetic war then 
there was open door open door for him for the wife and they, they dedicated a miracle house on the 31st of December 2015. I hope you listen to that testimony. You are next in line for a miracle. Yes. So ask God, speak to me this morning. I want to hear you. Lord, speak to me this morning. I want to hear you. He wakened me money by money. Settle my own case also. They were blessed with a bouncing baby boy. And there was no doubt about it. He was so sure and he said we are buying boys clothes because it's a boy that is coming because their battle has been won in their favor lord speak to me this morning let every battle of my life be won in my favor thank you father in jesus mighty name we are praying their financial status change in this business and career breakthrough this morning somebody's financial status is changing in the name of jesus if you are the one let your amen be the loudest give jesus your biggest hands with a loud shout as you take your seat from glory to glory i'm from glory to glory congratulations are you congratulating somebody and I, I think it's good for us to begin on that platform of those testimonies this morning. They were enough message. Those testimony is enough to tell someone your case is not too hard for God. Being privileged of God and his servant this morning to bring this word to you on this special day that God is breathing on your business and career. I see your position changing in the name of Jesus. One of them, Sister Milka, had a bomb that was not selling and came to Zion, put the album on the ground and began to say, let the fire burn in here, the life of God here let it enter into this album and let every debt every financial captivity be broken just like our father saw at the beginning a large house bishop david Oedipo, arriving from heaven and there was a fire burning on that large house and the large house divided into splinter houses and the same order of fire burning on the first large house was burning on those smaller splinter houses and God told him, this is the church and the ministry I've given you. So the same other fire burning at Faith Tabernacle base is burning here. How many of you is saying amen to that? Yeah. And suddenly, the album started selling. Because the breath of heaven stepped into them. I see that becoming your portion in the name of Jesus. That sister was frustrated until one of our dignities met with her and speak the word of life to her and her life was turned around he said now my son is in form four and everything is doing well christ is the answer to every crisis in your life and whatever crisis you came with this morning not one will follow you back in the name of jesus and coming to brother eric's testimony i've always told you about a protege of mine that got a word maybe online i can't tell because she i mean he was still in zanzibar then working and he said he had me saying on this platform in 30 days god will give you an international job presently he swim me in that international job everything is working on the 30th day he got them appointment later and never stop serving god that was the man that told me a story that it is always ordering bob that the entire family had they were so poor and he will have to carry the two kids on the lap or three of them so that they don't occupy extra seats time will not allow him to share all that he privilege here put them on the lap and uh, 
the conductor will say, let them sit down. They say, no, 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 it's okay here. Yeah. You know, I have what it takes to carry them. And the neighbor will say, give me one. Let me help you. The neighbor who understood <laughs> this man had a challenge of money. But suddenly, God, that, that, that's the man testifying this money. He said, on the 10th of June, after a word came on the 22nd of the previous month, that somebody is dedicating two cars. He said, he had me saying, somebody is dedicating two cars. Then on the 10th of June, the first car, 13th of June, we were there to dedicate an edifice, a miracle house for him. 3rd of July, the second car came. When the car had a challenge, we went to God's servant, the region of Asia, and the part they could not find was discovered was tapping to anything called prophetic in the house he can quote for you what pastor Pio said god is no respecter of person and when our grandfather came here pastor here at the boy i was privileged to be called that they need a car to carry him and he gave his car for service like you had him and out of the three, four cars presented by everybody from every corner, the prophet walked and said, I want this. And rode that car throughout. When they brought that car back here, I said, before you step into your car, I must get into it ahead of you. I jump into that car. Don't play with the prophetic. That was the man who put hand on my father. Bishop David Oedipo. And you see what this ministry has given back to today. You are next in line for a greater breakthrough. Yeah. And the car had a little challenge. And before you know it, came to my office, went to God's servant's office, and prayer was prayed. They part they thought they would buy at 1.3 million. That was the figure. Came back to me last Sunday and said, after your prayer, and God's servant's prayer, they didn't need to buy it again. A rescue came. You can't be suffering God and be suffering. Therefore, every suffering in your life, on this covenant day of business and career breakthrough, is hereby terminated in the name of Jesus. Stand in the apostolic shoe of my father, Bishop David Olani Yoyedeko. You will never run into debt again forever. Another word is coming. Don't play with it. It's coming already. Every debt over your life because of this covenant day is hereby written off in the name of Jesus. In seven days, some of you will run into surplus here. Yeah. Some of you who has been in debt, you are moving into surplus. You will start lending to the nations of the earth. Please believe it. Just anything can happen. Okay. Did you hear that my protege Esna's favor? Got a miracle, Joe, by a prophetic war. When they say, you say, most of it I can't remember when I said it. Okay, she said, I said. And got a miracle job. And now they gave her a target. One year or three months, three month target, and she had the challenge. But a senior government official called her, say favor. He said, After I came to Covenant Hour here, and the Pastor Victor said, and I head on to it. Then a senior government official called, called her and said, Don't worry, I need a property, and I don't know how you will get it. And he got two of those property. Just be sure she was not the only one told. Please take note of that. And one of the two properties she got was picked. And the target she's supposed to hit in three months was hit under 24 hours. I hope you listen to testimony. Mommy Faith Oedepo, our mother in the faith, always write testimony like writing a book. When testimony is going on, and when you see us here, God's servant is writing. I'm writing. Look at it. I have them. 
Because testimony are the stepping stone to the next breakthrough. Your next breakthrough is appearing in the name of Jesus. This morning we continue. Understanding the blessedness of prayer and fasting. It was needful we learn lessons from those testimonies. Understanding the blessedness of prayer and fasting. And we are on part four today. That has been our Sunday teaching series. Now hear me very quickly. Fasting spiritually and supernaturally expedite answers to prayer. What fasting does is to empower the prophetic for delivery. Fasting empowers the prophetic for delivery. What could not have been accomplished naturally or in the energy of the flesh, God takes over and into it and make it a possibility by fasting. So fasting is not to bribe God. Say I hear. Tell your neighbor, fasting is not to bribe God. Tell another neighbor, fasting is not to bribe God. You don't bribe God with fasting. Fasting is not for God. It's for you. Can I hear it louder? Amen. Fasting is not for God. It's for you. Somebody's position is changing today in the name of Jesus. So there is nothing for show up in fasting. You know, I've been fasting since last year. Good, but show me the result. We are always after the result. One of our dignesses came here last Sunday and told us the number of days she fasted and came with a catalog, a list of the result. You, you, you can't use fasting to bribe God. God has never eaten since he came into existence. I, 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 if you think I lie, you tell me the menu. What's God's menu? What's the meal he take? He's never taken any of this physical food. Ugali, eh? Shukuma. <laughs> he doesn't take. So, I don't know, I've never eaten since the beginning of this year. Where do? <laughs> I've never eaten since the heaven and the earth came into existence. So that doesn't move me. Fasting is to energize your spirit man to take what belongs to you. Say, I hear. So fasting is to empower you to deal with witches and wizards. Demonic cat, demonic rat sitting on your destiny. To unseat them. That's why he said in Isaiah chapter 58, we just have to quote it. Isaiah 58, verse 6 beginning. All the wickedness of the enemy must be terminated in your life. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness, not to bribe God. The bands of wickedness on your neck, not on the neck of God. To undo the heavy burdens, the weight sitting on your life, to unseat it. To undo it and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break not one yoke say every yoke every yoke on your life is broken today in the name of jesus and it's very important we quickly look at what is breakthrough because we are on this covenant day of business and career breakthrough so let's quickly look at what is breakthrough and we talk a bit about breakthrough then we get back to fasting what is breakthrough Breakthrough is, lit literally, it means the act of making or forcing a way. Forcing your way through where there seems to be no way. The act of making or forcing a way. There was no footpath in the Red Sea, but they went through on a bridge. Breakthrough, supernatural. There was no way to penetrate through Jericho. The wall was high, and the wheat could seat houses. The wheat of the fence could seat houses. But those who came down for them, they forced their way through. I see you forcing your way through. Uh, Jordan has never seen anyone standing before it and laying claim that I want to pass through. Jordan has been swallowing everybody. But he told them, he said, the 
the Levites go ahead and they step into that water. As soon as their feet touches the water, leave it. As soon as their feet touch the water, leave it. And what happened? Jordan said, ah, covenant people are here. A bridge was created. I don't care how generational that problem has been that nobody in your family has ever broken through in it. You are breaking forth in the name of Jesus. You are breaking forth in the name of Jesus. And you know what the master said? He said, I am the way. John chapter 14 verse 6. I am the way. So the I am is here. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So Jesus is the way. So when you accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, what happened? The way is clear for you. Because he is the way. Tell your neighbor, he is the way. He is the way. Quickly, let's look at Exodus chapter 6. The God of breakthrough is visiting your house this week. Exodus 6 verses 2 and 3. Exodus chapter 6 verses 2 and 3. We are still dealing with breakthrough. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him. I, I, I've shared this scripture with you before. But I'd like you to listen and get the detail of it. I am the Lord. Verse 3. And I appear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name God Almighty. That was the name I used to appear to them. I call myself God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. God Almighty means El Shaddai. So the best that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all those covenant fathers, knew about God was God El Shaddai. What does he mean? God in whom nothing is impossible. That is God in whom nothing is impossible. God that can do everything. He said, but by my name, Jehovah, was I not known unto them. So Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob knew God as God in whom nothing is impossible. God can, that can do all things. But they didn't know him as Jehovah. What does Jehovah mean? The eternal God. Everlasting. Ever loving. Ever caring. Ever willing. Eternal. Ever loving. Ever caring. Ever willing. Everlasting. So, from there you can understand that God is not just the God that can do it. He's ever willing. He's also the God that we do it. So, it is not enough to know about the ability of God that yes, he can. It is also good to know about the willingness of this, our everlasting father, that he will. That's what makes the difference in the place of prayer. You are not just talking to the God you think he can do it. You are talking to the God you know he will do it. Come on with me, covenant people. This is your day. That problem will be solved today in the name of Jesus. That problem will be solved today in the name of Jesus. Because he's willing to do it. He's willing to give you a miracle husband. Not that he can give people miracles, but now, in fact, I can tell you the list of the people he has given in our church. Sister this, sister this. Sister. No, he's also planning and he's willing to give you. He's not just a God who is able to build miracle houses for people. He's willing to build estates for you. I can't hear you louder. Amen. So God was trying to say to Moses <laughs> that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, your covenant fathers, knew me as the God that can do it. But they never knew me as the God that will do it. So the willingness power of God was revealed to the prophet Moses. That's why nothing said no to Moses. There was no impossible case with Moses. Every barrier bowed. He said when the covenant people left Egypt, 
The sea saw them and fled. Psalm 114. Studio. Psalm 114. 114 verse 1 down the line. When Israel went out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange language. Verse 2. Judah was the sanctuary of God. God was staying inside Judah, the man of praise. And Israel is dominion. Verse 3. Then the sea saw God. So the, it means is the sea saw the presence of God. And fled. Jordan was driven back. Then first four, the mountains keep like rams. And the little hills like lambs. At the presence of God. What a lady, oh sea or mountain, they say, <laughs> tremble thou at the presence of God. He said, Yeah. So the willingness, power of God was demonstrated to Moses. The God that is willing is changing your level today. That's why, how many people, do you believe God can turn your situation around? Yes, he can. But do you believe he will do it this year? Nobody can tell. I know he's able, he can, but I, I'm not too sure whether he will do it this year. <laughs> and in other words, what you are saying is that he is a partial God. He takes care of some people and he leaves some people. Far be it from the Almighty to do wickedness. If you want your miracle children now, the way I got my own, you'll get it now. Say now. You want your miracle house the way you had testimony, you will get it. In fact, before the service is over, your phone will be. <laughs> huh? For those whose phone is on vibration, and for those who have switched it on, I mean, switch it off. As soon as you switch it on, you say, bra, 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 bra. It will come from any continent, it will come from any part of the world. Come what may, this last week of the spiritual adventure of 21 days will practically deliver your expectation into your hand. Surely there is an end. And this is the ending week. And your expectation shall not be cut off. Proverbs 23 verse 18. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 18. I decree everyone's expectation shall not be cut off in the name of Jesus. And coming to the New Testament, you see the power of that. Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter number 1. Here was this man sick. Verse 40 and 41. Mark 1, verse 40 and 41. And there came a leper to him, besieging him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, If thou will, look at that statement. If you have not opened to the place, just check it on the screen. This man said unto the master Jesus, If thou will, thou canst make me clean. You have the ability, you can. But I'm not too sure whether you are willing. If thou will, thou can. And Jesus moved with compassion. Now, why is this man talking like this? <laughs> now, he put forth his hand. This is revelational insight from heaven. Look at it. He put forth his hand and touched him and said unto him. He didn't say be healed. He said, I will. He didn't say be healed first. He said, I will. So be thou clear. Your problem is that you don't believe I am willing. So he answered that question first. God is willing to change your level now. Now, not tomorrow. Say now. That's why he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, Now is the accepted time, and today is the day of salvation. I see your breakthrough coming in the name of Jesus. I don't care where your hand has been tied. Joseph, we read about him in Psalm 81. Psalms chapter 81, verses 3 to 16 down the line, but we just read a few verses. Psalms chapter 81, look at the man Joseph, I don't care where your hand has been tied that has not allowed you to prosper. This very week, that ifu pot shall be broken in the name of Jesus. Now look at it, Psalm 81. When you can't see breakthrough, it means your hand or your leg is tied or your destiny is tied somewhere. But it shall be broken today. Psalm 81 verse 3. 
blow up the trumpet i'm blowing the prophetic trumpet this morning as an accredited son of the prophet one of them in the house blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed this is your appointed time on our solemn feast day we are on a solemn feast three weeks and we are seeking the face of god for this was a statute for israel and a law of the god of jacob verse 5 this he ordained in who in joseph for a testimony your own testimony is coming when he went out through the land of egypt where i had a language i understood not a language that i understood not talking about joseph then see what he did for him in verse 6 i removed his shoulder from the body his hands were delivered from the pot there are people like that walking and laboring sweating hard working but they are putting money in one evil pot they say i don't know what happened i every month they give me sixty-five thousand Kenya Shilling. i don't know how i spend it that's my salary some of them 150 some of them 250 some of them you are you may not believe it four hundred thousand, but they are in that evil pot he said i deliver his hands from the pot every evil pot where your hand has been kept it is declared broken today in the name of jesus now look at Zechariah chapter 1. Covenant people, look at it. Zechariah chapter 1. I'd like you to follow with your spirit, man. Zechariah chapter 1, verses 16 to 21. Zechariah chapter 1, verses 16 to 21. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies. Say amen. Any blessing you see there, just be saying a louder amen. The louder your amen, the quicker your blessing is rushing. My house shall be built in need, saith the Lord of hosts. And a light shall be spread forth upon Jerusalem. Then verse 17. Cry yet, say, thus saith the Lord of hosts. My cities through prosperity shall yet be spread abroad. And the Lord shall yet comfort Zion, that is you. And shall yet choose Jerusalem. How will he do it? Then the prophetic picture came. A prophetic parable he said then lifted i up my eyes after that word came that my level of prosperity is changing then i lifted up my eyes and saw and behold four demonic horns four horns sitting on people's destiny that is probably in your lineage and i said unto the angel that talk with me because every time you are given a vision there is always a man beside you john talk about the man an angel a guide and i said unto the angel that talked with me what be this and he answered me these are the home which have scattered judah israel and jerusalem it won't let them prosper and the lord showed me four carpenters and verse 21 then said i what come this to do that is the four carpenters what are they here for and he spake say like I told you before, these are the horns which have scattered Judah. So that no man did lift up his head. Nobody prospers. As they rise, they go down. As they rise, they go down. They say, hey. But these four carpenters are come to scatter them. Fray them means to dismantle them. To fray them. To dismantle them. To cast out the horns of the Gentiles. Which lifted up their horn over the land of Judah to scatter it. Ours is a prophetic ministry in this commission. So those carpenters represent the prophet. And as I stand in the apostolic shoe of the prophet over this commission, every one of the wicked one sitting on your business, sitting on your career, sitting on your ministry, sitting on your family, sitting on your lineage, they are broken today in the name of Jesus. They are broken today in the name of Jesus. You are going out of this service free. That's why we need to get empowered through fasting. Check this scripture with me. Zechariah, again. You will finish well. Whatever project or agenda of God for your life, you are accomplishing it this year. Every agenda from heaven that is long overdue, black 
ke kotush ambati ko homba la ebratenesuza as the commission and the entire winner's family move from glory to glory it will change your position eternally i cannot hear you louder amen seek liar chapter 4 verse 6 beginning now follow there are scriptures you have read before and you couldn't understand now the holy ghost is breaking them down this morning not one man is breaking them down but the spirit of god look at Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 and pay attention then he answered and spake unto me saying this is the word of the lord unto serubabil saying not by might not by the energy of the flesh not by power not by who you know but by my spirit said the law of hosts not by those who are in power but by the spirit of god then verse 7 who art thou O great mountain barrier that won't let people break forth before serubabil thou shall become a plane please if the bible is your own and it's the hard copy not soft copy underline it who art thou O great mountain before serubabel thou shall become a plane underline a plane and it shall bring forth the earth stone underline earth stone uh, pay attention to earth stone in particular earth stone underline it shall bring forth the earth stone thereof with shoutings what will it be shouting crying grace grace unto it it is grace you need to be free from disgrace whatever has looked difficult in your lineage in your destiny in your family in your career and in your business grace will level it this week in the name of jesus grace will bring the accomplishment in the name of jesus back to that first let me see that first again back to that first that's first what seven now eight moreover the word of the law came unto me saying verse 9 the ends of serubabel his hands have laid the foundation of this house his hands shall also finish it i say you will finish that project some of you say but i have not started but you are finishing it this year fulfillment and accomplishment is your portion and thou shalt know that the lord of hosts hath sent me unto you them first 10 you will love it for who had despised the day of small things for they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of serubabel with those seven they are the highs of the law which run to and fro through the whole earth now keep Zechariah chapter 4 keep it open don't close it keep it open and keep your focus on verse 8 studio keep your focus on verse 8 nine now he said the arms of serubabel have laid the foundation of this house his hand also shall finish it there is something god has started in your life that the enemy is fighting but perfection of beauty is coming upon him this morning in the name of jesus back to verse seven seven who are thou which is occult enemies great mountain before serubabel thou shall become a plane say a plane and it shall bring forth the earth stone so let's look at this word earth stone verse 7 we're talking about the earth stone of your vision the earth stone of your project the earth stone of your destiny now the man Serubabel in the book of Zechariah wanted to rebuild the temple. Keep your focus here. He wanted to rebuild the temple of the Lord. Then he laid the foundation. Listen to me. For those who have been building houses for 20 years, 10 years, he laid the foundation. But the people, the enemy, came against him and made him to stop. So he stopped. For 10 years, he stopped. There was no work done. Serubabel. Then the Epas came. Ministry of the Epas. Because prophets are agents of help. So Zechariah came on the platform. One day, 
the prophet Zechariah came by and instructed him to do something very interesting. Something very interesting. He said to him, go get the headstone of that project. Now, what is headstone? It is the finishing stone for a building. Now, for those who build and God provided for you, you have all the material to finish the building. In case you don't even have it, you have the architectural drawing, you have the model, and you know the material that will be needed. And so, you know what you will use at the finishing touch. So the air stone is next to the roof. The air stone. And especially designed in their days. So he told him, Sekariah told him, go get the air stone, the finishing stone, and keep it before you. And walk in the prophetic. So he kept the air stone before him. And was speaking to every devil that won't let him get there. That is why it is good. Believe in God for miracle children. Go get the cloth of those children. You can start paying tight for them. You need a miracle wedding. Go buy the wedding shoe. Go buy the wedding ring. Say for who? Just buy it first. You need a miracle house. We are talking about breakthrough. Get the architectural drawing of that house. Get the model of that house. Keep it on your desk in your room. Keep it on your desk in your office. Let everybody that enter your office mock you. But keep your eyes on it like this. That man that I, sh I shared about him on the 10th of January this month a second Sunday he kept the model of the aircraft on his desk and everybody that was entering was almost mocking mocking him what is it he said that's my new plane and the model in most cases God does beyond your imagination eh? Ephesians 3 20 unto him that is able to do a seeding abundantly above all that we <laughs> look at it on the screen now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think ask or imagine according to the power that worketh in us so he does more than your imagination tell your neighbor god does more than your imagination in giving you breakthrough shout to your neighbor say never in giving you supernatural breakthrough God does more than your imagination now the plane that man kept the model of the plane he kept on his desk was a two-seater the plane he later bought and he paid stress free he paid stress free because the man said if only you can be doing my monthly payment and he had power to do that did it and clear for a few months and then he had the aircraft. Now the one he now bought, the new aircraft he bought from the man who has been in the same business before was 12-seater. But the model he kept was 2-seater. <coughs> Ephesians 3.20, keep it there. God does more than your imagination. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. He does abundantly. So this was what Serubabel did. He kept the airstone before him. The airstone was the stone reserved to be the last piece of stone that went into any building. That was prophetic, symbolic, and dramatic. That was prophetic, symbolic, and dramatic. The airstone represents the finished product. Now listen. How symbolic was the airstone to Serubabel? Every time he looked at the airstone, it was a reminder that God will finish what he has started in his life. Are we together? Every time. Whenever Serubabel is discouraged and challenged, tired, almost famished, and almost giving up, he goes to look at the airstone. The energy is fired into him. You remember Jim Carrey? He wanted to be in the acting service wanted to be an actor and that was it the 
dream was being taken away from him regularly. But he did something because he was raised in a first wagon van. He did something. Wrote a check in his own favor. Ten million dollars. And he said, very shortly, in the acting industry, they will pay him ten million dollars. Today, Jim Carrey is a comedian. They pay him from 15 to 25 million dollars <laughs> unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. He was gone for 10 million dollars. Now he's on 15 to 25 million dollars for every movie. Because he kept the esto, he wrote a check of 10 million dollars and put it in his wallet. Every time Satan said you are a poor man, he pulled out the wallet. Lord, I'm getting there. So the airstone is just a prophetic way of God saying, I am in control. I'm going to bring it to pass this year. Can I hear a louder? Amen. God is in control. He's going to bring it to pass this year. When I was in Lusaka, Zambia, a church of nine hundred. Oh, I keep troubling them for three first weekend I got there. Go buy plastic chair. Go buy. So I raised the offering of plastic chair in the church. And our family led. We led in the offering. And plastic chair rushing in. We were placing it every Sunday outside. In no time, the people came. So when Sunday is coming Saturday night, I asked them, go get more. When it was short, that God is changing our level in a frequency we never imagine. I will be in the study room and God will show me the crowd coming the following day. I just walk out. 4.30 p.m. Now go hire plastic chair from anywhere. 3,000. Say, ah, so we have arranged more. And in most cases, 97% probability of every Sunday, they are all occupied. Esther. That's the power in that song. God is able to do just what he says he will do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to us. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up on you. He's able. Do you know it? Praise God. So God is able to change your level. And he's changing it this season in the name of Jesus. He's changing your level this season in the name of Jesus. Even in the secular, we see people who have accomplished great feet walk in breakthrough then we tidy up from the kingdom now Korea Express concerning what I read about it began 1930 and Korea Express is 86 year old today began 86 year ago what did they do I mean what's their job what do they deal with parcel delivery faculty management international logistics Container businesses, distribution of business. This is what they do. But it was somebody's project while he was in school and submitted all the write up on it. But the supervisor will never believe it. This can't work. No, nonsense. Cancel. He wrote many times. Then finally, the professor said, Before you kill me with your coming every day, all your colleagues are going. He gave him C. This is impracticable. Can't work anywhere. Whether it's practicable or not, when the guy left school, he went to start it. It doesn't matter those who believe in you and those who don't believe in you. He began it. And today, Korea Express can pay such professor, about 10,000 of them, comfortably. The man was given C, but he never gave up. L listen to me, if you think you can, you can make it. If you think you cannot, you will not be able. As a matter of fact, there is no way by which you can if you think you can make it. If you think you can't make it, there is no way you can make it. You will make it. Nobody believed in Papa when the journey began. But he believed in God. And he believed in what God has put inside him. Our Father Bishop David Oedipo. And that was it. He said October 3rd, 1984. You know what happened? 1984 October 3rd, they were left with 3,000 naira, 1,500 Kenya shilling. And they were looking for how to pay rent. 
And he said, he told everybody there. It looks like something special today. But a time is coming. Some of us, we take up or take off in the air. And you begin to wonder. We don't even know what they are using. Let me tell what I'm using. He said, I'm sold out to God. Because I can see a future in God. I'm sold out to God. This 3,000 era, 1,500 kaya shilling, look like something today. But a time is coming. Some of us will take off in the hair. And you begin to wonder. We don't even know what they are using. Say, God knows that if I have this 3,000 era, 1,500 kaya shilling, I will not talk to any one of you. I just put my hand in my pocket. They wanted to pay for rent for a facility for the ministry. But it wasn't coming out. 1984. That was it. But 12 years later. Say 12 years. You know what happened? 12 years later. September 22nd. 1996. A mega edifice of Dominion Cathedral. In Kaduna. Was being dedicated. They were looking for 3,000 12 years earlier. But 1996. 22nd of September 1996, a mega edifice, Dominion Cathedral, designed on letter D, standing for Dominion. And at the beginning, they said there was no way to roof it. He said, don't talk to me about roofing when we are still on the ground. When you get to the roofing level, we talk about the roofing. They said, ah, only by space deck, said, mm -mm, leave it. Uh, if we get a, 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 a white man, Musungu, he said, no. The white man, does he have a different color of brain? And how many cells are in his own brain? From 1996 to date, Dominion Cathedral has been standing. Supernatural breakthrough. Roof on letter D. Praise the Lord. God's servant in the house has served there as the res resident pastor. Now, Dominion Cathedral is still standing till today. Your level is changing. I said your level is changing. 15 years later, where they were looking for 3,000 naira, 1,500 Kenya shillings. They didn't have 1984. Then 15 years later, between 84 and 1999, how many years? 84, 1999. I think it's 15 years. 15 years later, the largest church auditorium, September 18th. Everything is September. September 18th. Is it that September or December? September 18th, 1999. Faith Tabernacle was dedicated. Largest auditorium, church auditorium on the planet earth. Yes, sir. It does not take time. Hallelujah. It only takes the truth. Woo. They were looking for 1,500 kaya. That should inspire somebody here. That I cannot die where I am now. My level is just changing. Can I hear it louder, amen? Yes. I see your level changing. 18 years later. Now, the year 2002 and year 1999, how many years is that? That's three. 18 years later, Covenant University was built, established a university. But 18 years before, they didn't have 1,500 Kenya shillings, 3,000 era. You cannot die where you are. I can't hear you louder, amen? 1985, they were going to do the name of their second son. And their beloved Pastor Isaac Oyedepo, who is the region of Asia, South Africa now, when he was born, they had only 10 naira, 5 Kenya shillings, 5, I didn't say 5,000, 5 Kenya shillings, to do the christening of the baby, the name of the baby, 5. He said, and the man with me then said, sir, it's not anything. We can just take money from church purse and then. He said, no, church is not the father of the baby. I am. It is only this five Kenya shilling, ten era we use for the christening. Anybody who cannot take mandasi and drink water on the way, why going? Whether water is here or not, let him not come. That was it. But before the baby will start going to school, now baby Isaac then could now choose the kind of car he likes to ride. So there were now many cars in the house. It does not take time. Tell your neighbor, relax. Your word is waiting for you. You people seated there will be the one that will bring forth the glory of the kingdom in the name of Jesus. Can I hear it louder? Amen. 
So get ready. You are going places. Now we are waiting for empowerment to see all these prophecies fulfilled. What is the profitable approach to this fasting that we are doing? The waiting we are doing. What is the profitable approach in order for us to get results? Number one, engage in praying for spiritual leaders. Don't just, that, that lady said, she was praying for the kingdom. And God changed her level. Engage in praying for the kingdom and spiritual leaders in the kingdom. Engage in praying for our spiritual leaders. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. Engage in praying for our spiritual leaders. Ephesians 6, verses 19 and 20. And for me, that utterance, Paul speaking here, may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Pray for us, that utterance may be given to us. He said, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Look for spiritual leaders to pray for. Huh? How do I tell you this? Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 talk about door of utterance. Chapter 3 verse 2. Finally, brethren. That's verse 1. Now, 2. 1 and 2. Let's read 1 and 2. 2 Thessalonians verses 1 and 2. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is. Free course. The word of God should have free course. Verse 2. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men for all men have not faith. All men have not faith. Colossians chapter 4 verse 3 talk about door of utterance should be open to us. Colossians 4 3. Colossians chapter 3 uh, chapter 4 verse 3 we that pray also for us that god will open unto us a door of utterance to speak the mystery of christ for which i am also in bond proverbs chapter 27 verses 18 and 19 he that keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof proverbs 27 verses um 18 and 19 whoso keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof the fruit, uh, the, the, the fig tree is the servant of God. The servants of God in, in your midst. Beginning from God's servant, Bishop David Oedepo. Whoso keepeth the fig tree shall eat the fruit thereof. So he that waited on his master shall be honored. He said, as in water, face answered to face. So the art of man to man. The art of the same man of God will be blessing you. He will be in his study room. Just like in water, face, answer to face. Your, your, your face will appear in the story room. And he will say, what is this? He said, bless him. This man, whether I know his name or not, law establish him. That's the way it happened. It happened to this little me. I'm studying like this. I just captured the faces of some people in this church. It has happened again and again. It means you are standing in the place of prayer for us. You are not part of the people casting us down. I see your faces. This little me. This is the secret of the favor of God and the advancement I've had my little me in the kingdom. My heart has never gone wrong against Bishop Oedipo. If you see Satan himself, ask him. I have wept. I have cried on issues concerning him in the place of prayer. Just like the way he labored for me in prayer. And so it is forbidden for me to be granted. You have understood it more than what I've said. Number two, we must come to the Father in the name of Jesus. We come to the Father in the name of Jesus. Every prayer is packaged in Jesus' name. John chapter 15, verse number 16. John 15, 16. John 15, 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I've chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father. How? In my name. It will be done. You ask the Father in the name of Jesus. John chapter 14. Verses 12 to 14. John 14. Verses 12 to 14. Verily, verily, I say unto you. He that believeth on me. The works that I do, he shall do also. And greater work than this. 
shall he do because i go to my father 13 now and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name he repeated it again and again that will i do that the father may be glorified in the son and 14 if ye ask anything he repeated in my name i'll do it so all those prayer without in jesus name i don't know where people will get it from our father in heaven we want to thank you bless us today go with us is pagan's prayer gentile's prayer the name of jesus is your access code to heaven say i hear john 16 verses 23 and 24 is somebody still with me this morning john chapter 16 verses 23 and 24 john 16 23 and 24 and in that day ye shall ask me nothing verily verily i say unto you whatsoever ye shall ask the father in my name he will give it to you ask the father in my name what will he do he will give it to you then in verse 24 he said itato have ye asked nothing in my name ah what am i waiting for he said you have not asked anything in my name ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full so when your joy is not full you are not asking yet ask until your joy is full the name of jesus your access code look at psalms chapter 9 verse 10 psalms chapter 9 verse 10 see what he said <laughs> he said and they that know thy name we put their trust in thee for thou lord has not forsaken them that seek thee when you know his name he will never forsake you is the country code of heaven the name of jesus is the country code of heaven just like plus two five four for kenya plus two three four for nigeria zero one for us the code of heaven is in jesus name father in the name of jesus say uh -huh, access he opened the curtain every veil is removed psalm 91 verse 14 psalm chapter 91 verse 14 as we begin to tidy up psalm 91 verse 14 because he had set his love upon me therefore will i deliver him i will set him on high because he had known what my name i will put him on high because he has known my name you must know his name now one man was cleansed he was healed in act of apostle chapter 3 as peter with his colleagues were entering into the temple he fixed his eyes on them and peter said sliver and good have i know but such as i have i give unto you in the name in what in the name of jesus rise up and his born and uncle receive what strength and when they were giving the testimony later acts chapter 3 verse 16 when the testimony was being shared later peter spoke Acts chapter 3 verse 16 he said and his name through faith in his name had made this man strong faith in his name not by my power <laughs> isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 his name is called wonderful the prophetic chapter isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 talking about the birth of the savior jesus christ he said for unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder can i hear a louder amen, amen. ask your neighbor are you still here and his name shall be called what i can hear you his name shall be called what wonderful wonderful is as simple as his name shall be full of wonders wonderful that is his name shall be full of wonders every time you inject his name wonders his name is like insecticide you used to chase insects they disappear witches disappear at the instance of his name say i hear wonder is the first component of jesus's name indicating his ability to produce wonder every name has ability to accomplish his meaning he came to save his people so he came to save us that's why in mark chapter 16 verse 17 mark 16 17 mark chapter 16 verse 17 and this sign shall follow them that believe in my name what will happen they shall cast out devil say in my name shout in my name in his name they shall cast out devil the name of jesus breathe signs and wonder at the name of jesus unction for breakthrough is released at the mentioning of his name the use of his name command his presence when you call a man 
Huh? By his name. What happened to the man? He answers you. Hidly. You know I'm calling you. When I say Hidly. Hidly. Uh -huh. So when you say in Jesus' name, he rises up. He rises up on your behalf. Everybody responds to the calling of his name. So he also responds to the calling of his name. Peter said, such as I have. So his name is a gift to the body of Christ. The name carries the same unction that Jesus carried. Look at it. Like he said in John 14, verse 13 that we read. The same unction. The same unction. And in Songs of Solomon, Songs of Solomon chapter 1, verse 3, he said his name is like ointment pour forth. Thy name is as ointment pour forth. So his name is like anointing oil that breaks the yoke. His name is like ointment pour forth. Songs of Solomon chapter 1, verse 3. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 made us to understand God has given him a name. Philippians chapter 2. Now check it from verse 9. Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. 9 and 10. Philippians chapter 2 verses 9 and 10. Philippians chapter 2 verses 9 and 10. He gave him a name. Wherefore God also had highly exalted him. And given him a name. Jesus. Which is above every name. He gave it to him. For our benefit. I see the name accomplishing wonder in your life. I cannot hear your louder, amen. Yeah. The national team, the football national team of Kenya is called what? I know everybody will know it. Somebody come close and say it. Eh? Permit me, I don't know that one. Eh? Arambe. Eh? And what? Arambe stars. Now, when Arambe stars play against Mali, against Zambia or against um, any nation and they win or against Nigeria and they win you hear every Kenya say we have won we have won then if it's Nigeria football national team that won a match you see Nigeria not we have won we don't win we don't win we don't win <laughs> that's we have won but only 22 people went Actually, it was even 11 players that play. But the whole nation said, we have won. Why? They went there, say for us. So Jesus went to the cross for everybody. <laughs> and conquered the devil, went to hell, stripped them naked. And came on the third day. The job is finished. And came, brought your breakthrough. He brought your supernatural breakthrough. Brought your victory. And so faith in his name alone. Like you, you, you have faith in Arambesta. That they will win. So when they win, you say, we have won. Faith in his name alone. Is your victory. Jesus' victory is our victory. Say, I hear you. Oh, you are breaking forth. We stop there on the name. Next approach to fasting we should also engage praying in the spirit when we are waiting on the lord romans chapter 8 verse 26 we pray in the spirit romans 8 26 we pray in the spirit say in the spirit when we pray in the spirit our faith is boosted as the spirit begins to search into the deep things of god as we speak in tongues insight will be coming so you know the kind of thing to pray about. The last two Kesha, that is the last two on night. After I had the war, answer expectant prayer. The Holy Ghost said, now change your prayer. He said, I'll give you the prayer, you will pray. As I was speaking in tongues, he said, pray this. And when I pray it for about five minutes, he gives me the answer. Have you ever seen that kind of examiner? Who gives you question and answer? He gave me the prayer. I was giving me the answer. The book is here. Every prayer, he will give me the prayer topic and give me the answer. <laughs> That's what speaking in tongues, you, so that we know what to pray about. Speaking in tongue or tongue, tongue speaking is our spiritual mother's tongue. Spirit, just like you have your spiritual, I mean your natural mother's tongue. If they ask you to speak, those who are kikuyu, speak now. Those who are luo, speak. And you speak your in inside dialect pastor victor can speak it 
but you'll be flowing in it hello why it's your mother's tongue so speaking in tongues also if you are born again and baptized in the holy ghost is our spiritual mother tongue when we are doing that satan can't understand so when you see issues that are difficult for you to understand pray in tongues when you see mysterious things happening in your life in the negative what do you do speak mysterious language learn to pray in the spirit romans 8 26 for we know not how to pray but the spirit helps our infirmity romans 8 26 we know not how to pray but the spirit helps our infirmity we don't know how to pray jude verse 20 he said pray in the holy ghost jude verse 20 so that's why we pray in tongue number four am i correct four or five for we must approach God with humility, meekness of the heart. Second Chronicles chapter seven verse fourteen. Second Chronicles chapter seven verse fourteen. Meekness. Say meekness. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, don't be proud. You know, yes, you are a child of God, but something has happened to your spiritual life. So when they say, "Ask for the mercy of God," don't be proud. When they make other call and say, do you want to rededicate your life? God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. I know certain things are not right in my life. I will come out here and say, Jesus, just help me, help me. Gave my life to Christ, August 25th, 1994. November of 1994, I had to rededicate my life. Eh? Forget about who you are. Who you are is not important. Where you are going is much more important humble yourself under the hand of God then he will exalt you the last section as we tidy up for today blessedness of fasting what are the blessedness of fasting blessedness of fasting we tidy up that quickly and we rise up blessedness of fasting we see that in Isaiah chapter 58 verses 6 to 14 Isaiah 58 verses 6 to 14 Isaiah 58, verse 6 to 14. And studio, you will do well if I can have the message Bible. We have been reading the King James for this month. I just want us to have a touch of the message Bible for those who didn't taste that during the midweek. Isaiah chapter 58. I need a message Bible. Thank you. Verse 6 beginning. Now, message Bible put it like this. This is the kind of fast or fast day I am after. To break the chains of injustice. Get rid of exploitation in the workplace. So those who have been robbing and cheating you, God said, I will get rid of the issue. Free the oppressed. My job is to free the oppressed. Don't need fasting. And look for somebody that is oppressed also. Free them, you yourself. Cancel what? Debt. So this fasting is to cancel your debt. What, he said, what I'm interested in seeing you do is sharing your food with the hungry. Hello? I believe by last Sunday, now next Sunday, last Sunday of this fasting, which is the last day, we will still charge you, I believe, we will still charge you more in distributing food to the less privileged. This is what you should use this season to do. So I say, church, we will see how to encourage you on that area and as we do that you catch the fire and even from now verse 6 let's go back to now he said what i'm interested in seeing you do is sharing your food with the hungry inviting the homeless poor into your homes huh? this fasting was starting on the 11th and on the 10th it was my privilege to host about 20 something people in my house and there are not people who have been giving me offering there are people who look like they are less privileged. Majority have never given me anything. I'm saying it to the glory of God. That's how we prepare for the season. He said, sharing your food with the hungry, inviting the homeless poor into your home, putting clothes on the shivering ill cloud, being available to your own family. Let your family feel you. Don't worry, I'm busy, I'm busy. Pray with them. Do this and the light will turn on. That is light will turn on for you. Breakthrough will come. And your life will turn around. At once, your righteousness will pave your way. 
the God of glory will secure your passage. Did you see that? That's breakthrough. Then when you pray, God will answer. You will call out for help. And I will say, here am I. Go ahead. If you get rid of unfair practices, cheating people, stop. He said, if you quit blaming victims, you see people who are doing things wrong in the church and say, you, you see, God's judgment will soon come upon them. He's a sinner. You have never called it. Come, come, come. How can I help you? Can we pray together? Quit blaming victims. Quit gossiping about other people's sin. Did you see the word? If you are generous with the hungry and start giving yourself to the down and out, if you see sinners in the church, call them or you pray for them in your closet. Oh God, this thing must not be like I am thinking. It's like that brother is a dupe. He dupe people. This one look like a fornicator. Oh God, change his name now. Your lives will begin. He said, when you do this, your lives will begin to glow in the darkness. When there's darkness, your light will be shining. Your shadow life will be bathed in sunlight. Can I hear a louder amen? amen? Then he said, I will. Look at it. I will always show you where to go. You won't miss your step. I will give you full life in the emptiest place of the... In the emptiest place. I said, I will give you a full life in the emptiest of place. Firm muscles, strong bones. You will be like a well water garden. A goggling spring that never runs dry. See what will become of you. And he said, you will rebuild the foundations from out of your past. You will be known as those who can fix anything. This is breakthrough. This is breakthrough. So what are the blessedness of this fasting? It is in that Isaiah 58. Number one of it is that fasting provokes supernatural breakthrough. Verse 12. Isaiah 58 verse 12. Supernatural breakthrough. Now, get back to King James. Supernatural breakthrough. Isaiah 58 verse 12. He said, And they that shall be of this shall build the whole waste. That is supernatural breakthrough. Number two, destroy, fasting destroy every satanic resistance on the part of our destiny. Every satanic resistance, wickedness, oppression. Verse 6, Isaiah 58 verse 6 is destroyed. And Matthew chapter 17, verses 19 to 21, he said, this kind cannot go, except by prayer and fasting. So every satanic resistance on the part of our destiny is destroyed. Can I hear a louder amen? amen. Number three, fasting empowers for fulfillment of prophecy. It empowers us for fulfillment of prophecy. Fasting empowers us for fulfillment of prophecy. Look at Jesus in Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verses 1 to 14. He was fasting day and night. 40 day and night. And verse 14. Look at verse 14. Jesus, Luke chapter 4, verse 14. What happened? And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region. He became famous. Fulfillment of prophecy. The glory of God showed, showed forth in his life. Number 4. Fasting enhances our love for God that launches us into one realm of glory to another. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Fasting enhances our love for God and it moves us from one glory to another. It enhances our love for God and it moves us from one glory to another. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Eyes have not seen, ears have not added, neither has he entered into the heart of any man. The things God has in store for them that love him. When you love God, to the point you are serving him day and night in service unit and with your giving, with your tithing, everything, with your offering, then you begin to change from one glory to another. Because the love of God makes you to serve with your offering, with your giving, with your services. Lastly, fasting secures posterity. Fasting secures posterity. Your future is guaranteed. Psalm chapter 22, verse 30. A seed shall serve him, and it shall be a, a seed shall serve him, and it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. One seed, and it shall be interpreted as a generation. Can I hear a louder? Amen. amen. This is where we are going. Your future is sure, your future is guaranteed. Because you are able to break every barriers during prayer and fasting. And you are able to start basking in the love of God. You that giving in the kingdom of God has become an issue for you. You naturally flow in giving. 
you had our brother today brother eric he said he started giving 20 to 30 percent as tight 10 percent is what the bible says but he started giving 20 to 30 percent you can't outgive god he was giving more than what he's supposed to give and now two cars miracle house international job in 30 days he rushed at it somebody's position is changing somebody's position is changing so walking in the covenant becomes easy for you when you fast the love of god swell up in your heart as i round up in the next four minutes listen to this there is nothing that can be compared with walking in the covenant in your tithing in your vow shiloh sacrifices your worship offering it show your love for god so loved the world that he gave so if you so love the law it is easy for you to give your offering are not meant for us hello all those pastors will just be enriching themselves with our offering we pay tight i pay in case i can't speak for everybody and god's servant in the house pay i pay my family pay tight your offering is not meant for your pastor any pastor that is not a tighter will die a pauper he will come and beg church member secretly eh? technically by style you know in this ministry they don't pay us well and eh? just be praying for us is it's, it's a lie <laughs> it's not that they don't pay well it's not working in the covenant such person is not here can i hear a louder amen, amen. the story of jesse penny we have heard it from god's servant bishop david Oedipo, my father and your father jesse penny he told us about him a business giant listen to this i'll give three examples then we rise up jesse penny a tighter walking in the covenant a covenant practitioner and he became a business giant by it essentially he was raised on titan and he raised his business on titan jc penny in america raised his business on titan he was fully taught by his mother as a kid as a child that the tent of all that you hand on the earth belongs to god the tent that's how your business and career can break forth so he entered into that covenant and became a covenant practitioner he began to work in it and his business prosper and blossom then suddenly Jesse Penny felt, ah, his tithe was becoming too big. Maybe a million. He said, ah, to give all of this. So he looked at it, ah, this is becoming too much to give to God. So he stopped. And as soon as he stopped, the business crashed. And he said, God, God said, you thought you can do it without me. Then he came back to the covenant. Then the business jacked back to life. And he stayed in that covenant all throughout his days on the earth. Just see penny stores. You find it all over America. Can I tell you about John D. Rockefeller? First American billionaire. First American billionaire. Born July 8, 1839. At 52, he was to die of cancer. Then he divided all that he had for the less privileged. 50%, he gave it to the less privileged. And John D. Rockefeller stayed on age 97 from 52 a kingdom giver one day he signed a check of 500 million dollar for the kingdom of god and they ask him why do you give so much to church he said you call it giving to church i give to my god my father in heaven i'm not giving to church he was a philanthropist his fortune was mainly used for the kingdom of god and in creating the modern systematic approach of targeted philanthropies that's what he does and before he left he became a founder and after he left founder of standard oil company founder of university of chicago founder of uh, rockefeller university he became a founder of rockefeller foundation general education board his foundation had major effect on mercy education and scientific research now his net worth, listen to me, this will shock you. His net worth, John D. Rockefeller's net, net worth, what he worth, after so many years that he had left, the business didn't die. Posterity was guaranteed. After he left, 
2007, his net worth was $336 billion. Now, till today, I checked this money on Google. And I saw the gate is still number one. Uh, am I correct? By my search. And it's on $79.2 billion. $79. But John D. Rockefeller, a tighter, ended his journey on $336 billion. There is no question mark with God. When you walk in the covenant, your destiny is established. There is no comparison. $336 billion. And Big Gate is still on $79 billion. You will not die small. You will not die small. That's why those who are looking for breakthrough, prosperity, just give your life to Christ today. And a new chapter is open. You see yourself struggling with sin. Say, Lord, I give you my life. Do with me what you please. Then he will give you grace to live above sin and iniquity. You see yourself struggling in your family life. Okay, Jesus, I don't know whether I'm properly connected to you, but I want to properly connect today. Yes, Jesus. You give your life to him and he opened a new chapter. You are never on the same level when you serve Jesus. And today will be the end of every poverty and every crisis in your business in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to rise up on your feet. Because this day, God is terminating every reproach in your life. Lift up your two hands to heaven. Lift up your two hands to heaven. And say, Lord Jesus, open a new chapter in my life today. I see my destiny prospering. I see my destiny breaking forth. Open a new chapter in my life, Jesus, today. I see my business and career breaking forth. Lift up your voices and speak to God right now. Let the Lord hear your voice this morning. There is a change of level in my life. I am changing level and I'm changing position. I'm breaking forth. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Can I hear a louder amen? amen? This is your appointed day for God to open a new chapter in your life. If they ask you, are you born again or not? And you are not too sure. If they ask you, are you righteous or not? And you are not too sure. If they ask you, will you make heaven? And say, only God know those who will make heaven. It means you need a new chapter to be opened in your life today. Are you born again or not? You are not too sure. Then be born again today. Are you righteous or not? Then you need, if you cannot answer it, you need to rededicate your life. If you are struggling with sin, let him help you today. Will you make heaven? And you say, eh, only Jesus knows those who will make heaven. It means he's not sure. Why don't you sort it out today? And he's not condemning you. He's not calling you a sinner. People may look at you, but when God set you eye, the eyes of all will be looking at you there. So God is specialized. He specializes in turning people's destiny around. And before your point of contact will be blessed by God's servant, you need to take the right step. All of these things have no meaning until you say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. All eyes closed and all heads bowed. I love all the testimony I've heard today, particularly that of John D. Rockefeller. Who? Oh, his net worth as of 2007 after he had left was 336 billion dollars jesus change my level also so you need a change of level and you have discovered you've not given your life to christ you want to give your life to him this morning you want to say yes lord jesus i accept you as my lord and personal savior you want him to open a new chapter in your life today or maybe you have given your life to him before but you went back and you want to rededicate your life back to Jesus. Saying, Jesus, save me. This is the only service we have for the day. And Jesus is throwing the only good opportunity to you. To come back to him. Come, all ye that are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Your rest is here this morning. 
if you are not too sure of heaven he said let me give you the assurance of heaven today wherever you are you are in this category and you need God's help you want breakthrough you want a new chapter to be open in your life you want Jesus to come into your life to establish you and establish your supernatural breakthrough on top and to prosper you in your business and your career you are saying yes Jesus I want you in my life all eyes closed and all head bowed just put your right hand on your chest and I will pray with you right now wherever you are seated God bless you God bless you put your right hand on your chest wherever you are seated Jesus I need you in my life come into my life afresh God bless you I can see you all eyes closed please and all heads bow Jesus open a new chapter in my life today I am tired of struggling in life God bless you put your right hand on your chest and I'll pray with you right now I will pray with you God bless you God bless you I'm still waiting for the rest of you Jesus is waiting for you this is your golden opportunity I can even see some people lifting their hand already some are lifting their hand but put your right hand on your chest whether you are in the gallery or in the main auditorium wherever you are Jesus come into my life afresh I'm tired of failure I'm tired of defeat I want to accept you as my Lord and personal Savior now with your right hand on your chest say after me say Lord Jesus I know I am a sinner Lord forgive me I know you died for me and on the third day you rose again right now I believe I am forgiven I'm saved I'm now a child of God thank you Lord Jesus for saving me in Jesus mighty name if you pray that prayer with me quickly rush to the altar here you want a new chapter to be open in your life you want to step into a glorious destiny you want to step into a supernatural breakthrough rush to the altar here his arms are not too short to receive you come from everywhere from the back from the gallery wherever you are seated at the middle at the front he wants to receive you today let him receive you quickly quickly come this is your day let him open a new chapter in your life let him open a new chapter in your life come from everywhere they are coming they are coming quickly come you are the only one standing there you are the only one remaining there quickly come you are the only one remaining there quickly come this is your day the day he has made we will rejoice and be glad in it come come it's never late you can see join them he wants to open a new chapter for you it's never late come come this is your day come this is your day come this is your day one god the opportunity today one god the opportunity today one god the opportunity a lifetime opportunity don't miss it don't miss this lifetime opportunity you can still join them you can still join them keep coming keep coming his arms are humble to receive you his arms are humble to receive you his arms are humble to receive you you can still join them what a god the opportunity what a god the opportunity keep coming keep coming keep coming what a god the opportunity today what a day a day that god is opening a new chapter in your life Them is never late. God bless you. God bless you. Hold it. Hallelujah. Church, are you happy to see this multitude? Now lift up your right hand above your head this morning. And say this prayer of faith after me once again. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me. I know I have been a sinner. Today I ask for your forgiveness. I know you died for me and on the third day you rose again right now I believe I'm forgiven I'm saved I'm now a child of God I confess you Lord Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior thank you Lord Jesus for saving me in Jesus mighty name keep those hands up Heavenly Father your grace has brought these precious people let the same grace preserve them in the name of Jesus the power of sin is eternally broken in your life. Sin shall no longer have dominion over you. You are free forever. In Jesus' mighty name. Church, aren't you excited? A louder, amen.